for you. What you need is. Okay, so now um, the bulkhead is all sorted. I deliberately did that before the studs just to make it easier to get to both sides. Now that that's sorted, I can continue with the studs. So I've cut, I've measured one, and that's ready to go in. Now one of the tools I found to be great is just this dead mallet. Um, you can knock the timber around without um, you know, putting your dints in it or damaging it. Okay, so what I've done here is I've nailed it up the top and I've got it reasonably plumb and but as you can see it's definitely not straight there so we have to twist the bottom section in and nail it and this is how I'm going to do this. I'm going to grab the hammer, the claw hammer, and I'm hooking it on the back there. And I'm going to twist that until I get it straight, and then I'm going to whack a couple of nails in. chuck a nail right there so I can't come back That's how you do it. It's not easy. It's better if you can get them straight. That one had a lot more twist on it than I thought when I looked down it. But um, yeah, wood's wood, and you can't always get um, dead straight timber. Unfortunately, it's and a lot of the time when you do buy it, it looks straight. Then uh, if you had it sitting around, it can actually twist and move on you because you've moved into a different environment where it's getting um, a different temperature. And yeah, it could dry out more or it could actually absorb more moisture. And um, yeah, that could make a twist. So you need to be able to learn how to adapt to timber that's not straight. All right, so we'll just keep going on with the rest of them. And I forgot to press record on the last stud, but there it is there. Last stud's in. 
So all our stud work is finished for the external wall here. There will be a little bit more stud work once we cut the hole for the doorway there because I don't know where those studs are going to end up. Um, once I come out, I'll probably have to put another double stud on this side of the doorway and another one on that side. Um, yep, all our stud work for our plaster work is done uh, for here and on the inside. Okay, so even though these aren't really needed for support, they are needed to fix the plaster because um, you can't just, you usually get one side, but you don't normally get the inside corner if, if you know what I mean. Outside corners are not usually an issue because where the plaster comes on the outside, you've got the end of the wall that you can plaster to. But on the internals, it gets a little different. So you have to add extra stud work. They used to do four, but um, they've, they've since uh, tried to, you know, you're always trying to save material. And if you can do it with three, uh, you're better off. And um, there is no need for four studs in this corner because this is not even low bearing. And um, as I've found out, even on external walls, you create a cavity in there that you can't put insulation in afterwards. And yeah, it becomes a cold zone where heat can escape. So uh, this is a better way because there is no, there is no uh, cavity in, in between all these studs because you've got one this way. This one overlaps half of that one on this side. And then you have another one which is level with the other half of this stud coming out this side all right so now all i have to do because i've got the studs in now i can do the gap work just for some support for the plaster between the bulkhead here and the studs so there'll be one going in here i'll put one there because this span is a lot wider than 450 so that's why this one's here so it's 450 from here to there and we've got a little bit extra there so we'll throw an extra one in there. If we've got plenty of off cuts, it's only another five minutes work. So we'll put one on every stud going across. So when we put plaster underneath there, we have somewhere to fix it to. And then once that's done, I will then continue with the noggins on this side. I'm gonna do two runs. Um, as I saw over there, there's only one row of noggins across there, but I like to put two. Um, yeah, it's just the way I was taught. You always put two, even though it doesn't need it because it's not a low-bearing wall, but I just like to do it. Uh, yeah, so once I've done all the, finished off all the noggins, then I will start working out where I'm going to put power points as well, and I'll probably pre-drill for the Sparky to make his job quicker and hopefully he won't charge me as much because he won't spend as much time here um you know i mean drilling holes is not hard anyone can drill holes and uh generally i'm going to have double power points here so i'll say his power is going to come in probably straight through the roof there no doubt uh but i've got a yeah maybe not because there's a roof truss there, so we may have to come from outside here, down the wall, and then through that end stud to feed all these power points. They can all be looped off each other, so that's no problem. TV, um, I'll probably just drill to one side of the top plate there to get the cable through. Um, I'll have a look from, from inside the roof there where that's going to go so I don't actually drill through the rafter or anything important up there and uh, yeah it will bring our TV cables through directly straight down and once we sort of got that all sorted I will then move on to removing the rest of the existing pantry on the other side of that wall I started removing shelves 
there's another couple more to go we'll get rid of them and then we'll deal with this power point and any cablings that may be running through here we'll have to because this is going to create a doorway through here so that power point's got to go and um, even there's the old tv point that's going on that wall so yeah there's going to be a doorway through here so that, that has to go and then we have to sort out what we're going to do with that excess wiring we can then f actually use that because there's probably going to be power points along here because there's going to be a bench top along here we can just run that back up in the wall and then we can feed from there all the way along to those power points yeah that could be a way to go too Alrighty, so I will get into finishing off these little spacer blocks here and I'll come back and show you when it's am done. Cheers. Okay, so we have installed all the spacers to give our plaster that comes underneath the uh, bulkhead some support. So now we can screw into there and there. And um, yeah, that's all all done. And now the tools left is uh, do the noggins. Uh, I'm gonna leave here open so I can walk through any side and then we'll uh, get onto that task over there. Yeah, so we're getting there. We're getting there. All right, stay tuned for more. G'day guys, alright another update on how we're going, the wall pretty much finished, uh, well stud work anyway, we've got all our noggins in along here, two noggins, I've got pretty much all the noggins in on this wall apart from here to give me access in and out still, I'll you know, we'll put those in after I've created an entrance over there. Bulkhead is all done. Um, there's really no, no more work to be done for there. I have marked out, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but you can see a line there. And coming down there. So you can see I've started cutting plaster just a uh, shallow depth because we have a power point here and I don't want to cut through any wires I wouldn't think that there's wires coming down this way as I can't see anything from there coming down that way but um, yeah most likely they will be going either straight up or back up the external wall but we'll just do a shallow depth to start with uh, just the depth of the plaster and um, We'll go around and then rip off the plaster like we did on the dwarf wall. Um, went out and sprung for the M12 Milwaukee multi tool, and I'm glad I did. It's it's lighter, and yeah, just that little bit alone was um, so much better it must oscillate a hell of a lot quicker than the uh, Mazito did um, yeah no, I'm, I'm pretty happy with with it at the moment I'll let you know once I'm done but yeah it's it's and the vibration through my hand is a lot less than it is with the uh, Azito and I've um, got the six amp hour battery on there that I was using for the laser so yeah plenty of juice to run this and yeah plenty of power I guess this is the same blade i took off the um the azito and it is a little worse for wear i think i've tried to go through a bit of a nail there at one point when i was doing dwarf wall as you can see and but like this is only plaster but yeah yeah it just went through the plaster like butter as you would expect see how it goes through some timber when we need to but yeah I'm about to um, finish cutting through that. Let's get into it. All 
Okay, so I had to go a fair bit wider than expected and a little higher. Uh, you can sort of see the line of where we were, not too much higher. And I went 100 mil higher. That gave me um, room to cut the studs off at the top there um, and fit the, um, the header for the doorway uh, without damaging the plaster above it. So I only need 45 mil uh, up from that line and I've got 100 so I've got a bit to play with and I'll just have to fill that in with a, bit, a small piece of plaster afterwards. So we went wider. So as you can see, I marked on my line on the floor here. I've got a line here, which is the end, which is 600 out from that wall plus an extra 10 mil because the bench tops are 600 deep and that gives me 10 mil of wall in front of the bench top so you won't chip the edge and then we've got an 820 millimeter opening to this little line right there which sort of comes just inside of this stud if you remember the plaster was there there's the line of where the plaster was originally and i needed to put um well this stud's got to go and then we put in our first um riser stud and then we'll double start it at the back with a king to the top plate and then um because i didn't want to be screwing i like to put plaster on an edge so i've gone to the nearest stud cut halfway through it so now i can lay my plaster on this edge here and that'll give the plaster more support rather for, especially for the joint when i fill up the joint it won't just fall through it'll hit the stud and stop and yeah just give the plaster a bit more support and i did the same thing on this side because i was in nowhere land i've got to go stud uh, riser king stud and then i've got this i would have had this void um which now i can plaster from the edge around here back to this edge as well okay so that's all i'm doing for today because um before i continue further um i really do need to get rid of this power cable um, but that is supplying that's our microwave and then it it um, loops up onto a Penella power point behind this wall to power our fridge um, we're not quite ready to relocate those items just yet alrighty so we are making some good progress happy with uh, Framework took a little bit longer than I expected, I must say, uh, and that was mainly because of the uh, bulkhead we had to put over there, which I was not planning on for a cutout. So all my planning uh, was for a straight wall, none of this and none of that was supposed to be there. So that did take a little bit more thinking about. Like I said, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a carpenter, or a chippy as you call them. This is purely, um, yeah, just from whatever woodworking experience I've done in the past and mainly just uh, furniture that I have made. So, um, but it's all relative, you know. I'm a fitter and turner by trade and um, it's all about, you know, hitting your tolerances and I'll probably overkill this uh in the way of accuracy and squareness compared to the way the original builders worked but that's just the way i work i like to get things as close as i can and you would be lying to yourself if you think this is exact and perfectly it is not because the concrete's not flat the wall i started with wasn't flat the roof isn't dead straight um, so you just you're making compromises all over the place to try and um make it look good once the plaster goes on because that, that's all you're doing that framework is there to hold the plaster up um and it just need to be strong enough to do that all right so the missus has been gung-ho with the pantry 
this is the original corner pantry that we had and uh, she the wife's ripped all the shelves out there's a shelf on every one of these cleats so she's pulled all that out and um, we have to remove pretty much all this plaster so that's all going to come off so does this this is all going to be removed because that wall is is going that's going to be deleted all right let's get into it all right now the plaster's off um to get this wire out um i could disconnect all that but this has to go anyway this stud wall so i'm just going to cut the nails off and then it'll let me raise it up through the roof and then eventually i'll cut through those holes and just remove it from that part there because that that's not going to be there anymore so yeah i'll just keep cutting and removing these studs and then i'll also have to keep going with that plaster because that whole frame there has to come out so does the header up there yeah uh that does have to go i'm going to concentrate on this wall i've got to pull the oven out before i do that so i'll leave that wall for now and we'll just concentrate on this whole face here and this today all righty keep at it Oh, that was you do that. They're all coming. Yeah, they're coming apart there. So we've made some more progress here. Um, got the power removed to there. We found out that the power is actually coming in from, there's a power point on the other side of this wall for the fridge and it's coming from the roof supplying there. Then it was coming to the microwave and then it was going to that plug. So that plug does no power at the moment. So I've got a lead coming from another power point and I will restore power to that power point once I do the stud work here. We'll join in to this junction box and run it above the door or the doorway and back down into that power point and then I'll complete the circuit once again. <coughs> so we've... Uh, yeah, removed a lot of the plaster. We just put this up because we're not ready to demolition the kitchen just yet. We're still using it for as long as we can. Today's um, uh, goal is to get the oven out and start demolitioning this sort of box structure that houses the oven and the old microwave uh, box. So that's going to get removed as well and then we can start um, we can put all our stud work in and framework uh, bulkhead <coughs> uh, framework <coughs> so we can get this doorway finished and then once we've got all that removed we'll then have to bite the bullet and move into the kitchen but because i know this will probably take me all day to get rid of all this and do this stud work I didn't want to move into the kitchen and leave that without power because um, when we can get another few days out of it. Alrighty, I'll get back into it and uh, 
show you in the next update. All right, so as you can see, we've finished the removal of the oven cavity and the framework for the old pantry and we removed the there wasn't much holding that bit of plaster on once I removed the uh, all the framework and cornicing so we opted to pull that roof of the uh, pantry old pantry down as well uh, believe me that was a nice old mess cleaning all that up but yep we got it all done and now we are on to doing the framework for the entrance into the butlers. So we're pretty happy with yesterday's progress, getting all that done and all that cleaned up. It was a very cold night though. All the heat's going straight out there. <laughs> the weather was supposed to have warmed up, but it's gotten gone cold again. But hopefully it won't be for too long. So what I'm up to now is I've got a line mark there and that is going to be the um, the opening less the plaster and I've got another line over here which is how far the walls coming out less the plaster so I'm going to put a full stud this line I've marked here I know there's another one there stuffed up because the width of my um, I was going to reuse some of these old studs, uh, but a lot of them got nails in them, and uh, yeah, and they were actually too wide, which is the pro same problem with my pine. It's too wide for this bottom plate, and if that's too wide, then um, the plaster is going to be bowing out compared to the rest of the wall. So I've had to um, rip these down. This was a good piece, didn't have many nails in it especially on the edges where i was going to trim it i've narrowly cut these down to match the thickness of the bottom plate and the top plate so i won't have any bowing and uh, there's the, the edge of my stud work going to be this will be cut off and that part will be removed and this section here will be the riser which the the header will sit on it's not really needed for this because it's not supporting anything, but um, it's just, you know, I just keep doing it the same way I always do it. So that, that'll be the riser. This will be a full stud going from bottom plate to top plate, and then the riser will be nailed to this, and I'll probably nail it into the bottom plate as well. And then that will, the header up there will sit on the top of the, the riser, and um, yeah, that'll do the span for the opening to give me somewhere to plaster to, screw plaster to, and the same will happen over here. So yeah, that line there will be my, um, where this stud's going, and then there'll be a 45, I'm gonna use pine, uh, go 45 out, and that'll be my riser. And same thing's gonna happen over here. This is gonna be the full stud. So that'll be pulled back somewhere. I haven't marked that one yet. Back there somewhere. And then I'll have a, a riser. And the header will sit on both sides of that. And then I'll get nailed into those remnants of the old studs. I'll get nailed up into there as well. And um, yeah, that'll be the framework complete for that. All right, so there we are. I've got to get cracking into it because this afternoon I want to be done in time for the Bathurst shootout. So let's get into it. All right, so now that we've uh, removed all the old framework and plaster that was, because there was not much left, we just removed it. There's no reason why this needs to be open. So I've got some leftover plaster from when I uh, bricked the... When I did that wall and it's going to be just enough to fill this area here so I might as well use it because like I said we don't need to do anything 
I'm only going to put one, probably a light in this corner because it's going to get a bit dark now. But there's already a light up there and that will just get relocated um, once we position, uh, work out the bench tops and everything. Probably have to bring it out this way because it was originally in the pantry about here. So we'll probably have to bring it out back here. There it is there. You can see it there. It's just a down light. So that'll probably get put in somewhere around here to light it up. But what I'm doing at the moment is, um, because it's an odd shape, I don't want to plaster fill that shape because no matter what you do in certain lights, you always see the fill marks. So what I've done is I've marked out here, see my pencil mark, and I'm going to cut along that line there because that is actually a natural plaster join. I don't know if it's showing up in the camera, but you can see, I can see a natural plaster join just running down to the left of those down lights down there. Actually in between this down light and there's another two there, there's a plaster join. You can see the fill mark. And I've got the same thing happening this one you can actually see it see that shadow that the light is um it blocks it because it's sitting a little higher than the rest of it that's um that's a fill line for a plaster joint too so my laser is set up on that and one i can't avoid but it's actually no i don't think so because the the plaster runs in this direction but there's, there's no join here but I can't get away without putting one one in there has have to join it somewhere but at least it'll follow a natural progression from the original plaster join so I've marked that line there and I've come out till I hit on the center of a rafter there and I've done the same thing here with that that's sitting on the center of the rafter and we'll turn the, the laser off and you can see I've drawn the lines there and there so that I just need to cut that out now and then um, I'll be able to fill that with plaster I'll we'll have to remove that tarp first too all right I'll uh, bring you back once we uh, made some progress. Alright, so I've cut out it into a rectangle shape. And I've even cut away some of the fill from the join here, which will give me a little bit more room to add fill so it doesn't become a large hump, which you'll notice on the ceiling. And I've done the same over here as well. And I've got a little block set up over here. Here's a ledge. And I can rest the plaster on on top, the top plate of the stud wall over there so that that's going to hold that up at this side I've screwed a spacer which is a bit thicker than the plaster to an organ on this side and then this is just screwed from a screw from the bottom of that into this and when I put the plaster up here I'll turn that like that and that'll hold the plaster at that end while I fix it at that end. All right, so I've trial fitted it. I know it fits okay. So now I've applied my adhesive and uh, tried it, time to uh, fix it in place now.
All right, so today I've decided to um, start um, checking and leveling out the studs. Because we're going to put splash back along here, or tiles, I think it's leaning towards tiles, we need the studs to be relatively uh, plumb with each other. So, because we don't want the tiles having a wave effect because one stud sticks out and one's lower and that sort of thing. So we need to pack out or remove material from studs so that we get them all parallel with each other. So what I've done here is I've run a string line. Uh, there's a string line there. But what I've done is I've got this packer installed here. This is 10 mil wide. And I've got, I've run the, I've screwed the packer to the stud and I've run the string line underneath it so it's hard up against the packer at this end. And I've done the same at this end over here. Okay, and there's a line which is the same up there of which to set the string line to so it's relatively parallel along that line and i've been working my and i've worked my way up to there at the moment so what i've done then is once you've got your packer installed i mark a line there so i know exactly where that measurement is and then i've got my square coming and i bring it up until the square touches the line plus three written on there and when i come up uh, each each line on the square is two mil and I'm in between two and four sorry I'm in between 12 and 14 mil so it's 13 mil all right so minus the 10 mil I have to add three mil and that's what I've done all along here so I've got Add three mil there, add three mil here, add three mil there, add three mil there, and same thing. I've got two along here. Um, I've got two there, one there, and zero and zero there. So there's something different going on there. And three, three, two, two. And here I've got two, two, one, zero. And this one's pretty straight, so I've got zero all the way up. And we don't have to worry about those end ones because that's where our zero 10 mil point was. Um, we don't touch those ones. So I've just got to keep, I'll keep going up to the top because um, that'll, having it straight along the top and the bottom uh, will be great for the cabinets as well, make for easy installation of the cabinets too. This is time well spent because it just makes hanging your plaster board so much easier and you'll have a much better result at the end of it a straight wall is um, a hell of a lot better than one that you know goes like this because when you paint it and the light hits it you get a nice look rather than very i know cupboards are going above and below this but that'll that helps with the cupboards and even more so with the splashback so it's it's uh yeah, it's worth putting in the time to get that right. All right, I'm going to keep going. Just thought I'll share that with you and uh, catch you on the next update. All right. As you can see, we've begun kitchen bench removal. Most of these had all the screws taken out of. Um plasters up on the ceiling from what I removed from the pantry still got a small piece to fill in there framework's all done for the entrance there one cabinet's already been removed from the corner um, just starting to remove all the skirting from around here Got one more length to go. And um, bench top, all the screws have been removed. I've just got to remove, there's some screws on 
or bolts underneath that basically clamp the join together. All right. As you can see, there's the clamp where they've cut out into the bench top. And there's basically a nut and bolt set up to pull to pull the two bench tops pieces together clamps it up so I have to undo that nut and that should release it shouldn't take too much to release it and then it should just fall out it's a pretty nifty little design there and I've got two one over here I thought there might be three but we've got two and that'll be at every join all right so they'll have to be removed because we'll take this off in pieces rather than as one full piece it's a bit big and heavy to um uh, move as one piece so there'll be one here well i think there's two or three there and there'll be another couple there and no doubt there'll be another couple here on this join and that's it so yeah got some work ahead of us today we better get into it all right so there was another clamp over here which i couldn't get to And that was also a biscuit joined together. There you go. Hate that piece. Right, a bit of an update. Um, as you can see, a little bit more progress. Mrs. has been working on this area, removing all the cabinets and a bit of the framework. We've only got the sort of the bottom plate of the the framed wall. We've still got a bit more there. That's where the um, those three, uh, I suppose, studs you'd call them, are just left there because we haven't. I was dealing with the water so um, I had turned the water off and the water has been disconnected and they're all plugged up there cooktops all gone gas lines been plugged up power points have been removed so plasterboards now ready to come off too and we can also do this side as well because that one's been removed as well all that cornice up there has got to get removed still as well because there's a bulkhead going in there above the cupboards same as all along here <coughs> so at the moment uh sink is all pretty undone taps have been removed as well um this these tiles are ready to just about come off but they're actually attached to the plasterboard so i'm hoping that once i get the sink out of here um this bench top 
Um, might be another couple of screws left to the cabinet somewhere that I've got to pull out, but hoping I can just pull that out and then the tiles just come out with the plasterboard. So now I'm all, all I've got to do is I'm dealing with the um, the drain for the sink, so which is not a big deal. Just undo a few of these. Oh, that one's a little tight. So we've just got to undo all these fittings, and then actually to get the sink out, I only have to undo these two. There we go, Oop, bit of water in the spend. We've got a bucket over here. Keep it in the bucket. Down in the bin, this keep that o ring. So now this sink should be ready to come out, as we can see. See, there she's ready, she's out. All right, so we're making some progress. I'll get that out. And uh, yeah, we'll come back for some more. Cheers. All right, this bench tops, last bit of bench tops ready to come out. I'm gonna grab that in. Just tip it to the side. So it's just this corner cabinet left now to be removed. Alright. We found the extra screws and um, they're all right at the back there covered with these little white things to conceal the screws. But we couldn't find them. So we'll just get rid of this. Because this pipe work has been glued in there, so we're gonna have to lift the cabinet over the pipe work which is not going to be fun around this elbow, but we'll see what happens.
right guys, here we are. Um, yep, cabinets are all gone. We've cleaned it up. And today I've started um, removing the tiles that need to be re removed. I'm using this uh, Azito Purpose Hammer Drill. Uh, it has just the hammer function. And I've got a chisel bit on there. And it's working quite well. It's getting it up. Um, look, it's not the most um, robust. Well, this it is, it is pretty heavy duty, um, but oh, it's a cheap brand. So what I'm doing is I'd, I chisel some tiles enough to fill up my little scooper thing here. And then I'll let it have a rest while I clean it up. Empty it out. Sweep up a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Because yeah, it does make a bit of a, a mess the way you're chiseling it up. That gives it a chance to cool down and have a rest so I don't burn it out. So yeah, we've got a few tiles to remove. We've got um, all this sort of area. And I need it to remove this first row there. And that first row across here. That has to go, probably these have to go. And I do need to probably get rid of this row here, because then that's getting squared off across there. Um, why not do the whole lot, you say? Well, I'm just, I've got a trailer full. Um, I need this tile removed to build a wall down here and for the cabinets to go in. The rest of the tiles, can come off later and depending on how much time I have between the Sparky doing his work and I've got to get the gas line moved I will probably take some more tile as I'd rather get all the tile removed before the cabinets go in so I don't damage any cabinets while I'm um, removing the tile but we'll just see how far we get but for now I just want to want to need done because I can fill in the nooks and crannies of that trail load with these because it breaks it up pretty small and that will get me ready for when the cabinets have to go in but yeah it's going to be a couple of weeks for the sparky anyway so that will probably give you plenty of time to get rid of the most the rest of it in between that all right i better get back into it i'll bring you back for some progress shots um in between i mean it's nothing exciting but uh, i'll show you the progress step by step as I'll remove some and uh, yeah we'll keep it going let's get back into it